When it comes to USA Basketball in 2024, they are in pursuit of their fish rate gold medal at the Olympics. And for most USA teams, it's about the team, the collective, and the unit as a whole. But unfortunately in 2024, it's about one guy to the media, that being LeBron James. Uh, I'm not trying to sound unpatriotic. I care more about LeBron's legacy than Team USA. And for LeBron's legacy, this is unbelievable. Why are you the way that you are? The state of the media in 2024 is absolutely dreadful. And the nonstop LeBron praise 24 seven just gets exhausting and downright annoying. And the worst thing of all, this adds to LeBron James being above the team, the country, and the centerpiece of everything. That attitude isn't just shared by the media and fans, it's shared by LeBron James himself. As in a game versus Brazil, LeBron on the bench, what happened? This dude yet again making himself the center of attention, crowning himself on the bench like the clown he is. Now here's the kicker, the French crowd, they weren't cheering for LeBron James, they were cheering for a French swimmer who won gold earlier that day. I am the king. I will punish you. Any man who must say I am the king is no true king. It is fairly obvious to the media LeBron himself, he's the center of the universe. And looking at clutch sports asset Brian Windhorst, this guy's latest concocted narrative while LeBron James is the greatest revolves around him winning the MVP of the Olympics. He's got four <laughs> NBA MVPs, four finals MVPs. He's got a couple of all-star game MVPs, but there's one more that he has. Oh, mid-season tournament. Don't forget me forget that. He won that one. He's got one more he's ever won, the Olympics MVP, which they just brought back in 2020. Kevin Durant won it in Tokyo. He is assembling a very strong case, Greeny. The last time I saw Brian Winhorst that excited and giddy was at Golden Corral about two months ago. And this guy gets overjoyed pushing LeBron propaganda 24-7 on ESPN. And watching that clip, this guy brought up the in-season tournament MVP as some actual accolade accomplishment that holds any weight. These people have zero shame. The in-season tournament, that is the biggest sham, the biggest joke in league history. And in regards to being the Olympic MVP, it's all narrative, no substance, no actual facts. As looking at Nikola Jokic across the board, the best player at the Olympics by a country mile ahead of Giannis. Jokic in these Olympics, 19.3 points, 11.8 boards, 7.5 assists on 60% shooting. Out of every player in the Olympics, Jokic is the only player top three in points, rebounds, and assists. And on top of that, he ranks first in overall efficiency. And Jokic and LeBron James wrote their teams they are the number one option, the primary ball handler, and the guy who operates the offense on any given night. But looking at Jokic, in terms of turnovers per 40 minutes, only averages 4.4. LeBron James per 40 in this tournament averages 8.4. Out of all players in the tournament, that ranks first ahead of William Gabriel. And here's the kicker. LeBron James' turnovers overall ranks third at 4.7. In case you guys aren't following, LeBron Team USA is running the LeBron James offense and they quote unquote Le System. And as you guys know, LeBron James only plays one way, whether it be with Dwayne Wade, Kyrie, or on Team USA. He always plays one way, the LeBron way. Um, well, my game uh, you know, does not change no matter who I'm alongside. Now, speaking of players who aren't one dimensional ball dominant, we have Kevin Durant. And I think Katie at these Olympics has the unsung hero for Team USA and one of their MVPs, if not the MVP. As looking at Durant in this tournament, he's been absolutely insane and unstoppable. At 14.8 points, 60% shooting, 60% from deep, and 93% from the free throw line. And Katie on this team, only playing 19.6 minutes per game, taking mostly jump shots and three pointers. Not uncontested layups, cherry pick dunks, like certain people on the roster. And if you want to talk overall impact, KD vs Serbia completely changed that game and made it a blowout. As prior to KD coming in the game, USA was actually down and losing. But you put KD in there, a quick 9-11 points, and by the end of the half has 21 on perfect shooting. Durant vs Team USA's toughest opponent changed that game and won them the game in the first half. 
and contrast that USA in exhibition play. First Australia, only won by six. Durant wasn't playing. South Sudan, won by one point. Haiti wasn't playing. First Germany, only by five. Again, Durant wasn't playing. Contrasting USA with KD versus without him, it's, it's night and day. And in terms of overall plus minus, a very telling stat, during these Olympics ranks first at plus 18 for Team USA. Now the guy behind him is Anthony Edwards at a plus 16.3. And Ant, much like KD, has a very good case for the MVP of Team USA as well as the Olympics. As thus far, averaging 16.8 points per game, the highest on the team, incredible shooting from the field and three, with 1.8 steals, also the highest on Team USA. If you want to talk two-way guard impact, high-level score and defender, Edwards in the Olympics has checked all the boxes. And why Edwards is a fan favorite so contagious, when this guy plays, he plays balls to the wall, goes all out on both ends. There hasn't been one game thus far where Edwards is kind of walking on eggshells questioning himself and not seizing the moment. And if you watch these games closely, Katie and Ant off the bench completely flip games in an instant. And in my view, at worst, are top three players for this team thus far. And one more thing I do want to hit on comparing the starters versus the bench. Guys in the starting unit, mainly Steph Curry, have struggled mightily. Durant and Edwards off the bench have been fine played their game, and they've dominated. So how is someone like Steph Curry, a starter for this team, playing so poorly? Well, the answer is pretty simple. Again, Team USA's starting lineup is playing the LeBron James system. Everything goes to LeBron James. He has the ball 24-7 and dictates the offense, the flow, and who gets to score. Steph in this so-called offense is a glorified Kyle Korver being put in the Westbrook role, the D'Lo role, of going to the corner, going to the wing, and not touching the ball. And look, Steph, unlike those players, is a great off-ball player. But at some point, a player has to have the ball in their hand sometimes to get a rhythm and feel of the game and their shot. So far, Steph in these Olympics hasn't been allowed to get that flow. And who's done that? LeBron James, the quote-unquote pass-first point guard and guy who's not a scorer. And this right here is my final point. When it comes to LeBron James, the player, from really day one in Cleveland down Los Angeles, he's played the same way throughout his career, rarely if ever going off ball and giving up the ball. That's why guys like Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, Kevin Love have to change their game, their mindset so much, playing alongside him. And Steph right now falls right in line with LeBron James and teammates who get cast aside, pushed aside by his ball dominance. That's why someone like Jokic so much easier to play with and makes guys so much better. As in the Joker's offense, an actual team-oriented offense, he isn't dominating the ball 24-7, pounding the rock, and getting cheap assists. He's getting assists in the flow of the offense, in the flow of the team. And you watch Serbia play. Lots of ball movement players moving, and not one guy dominating the ball at the top of the key, like LeBron James. Long story short, LeBron is Olympics, it's been all about him. Crowning himself, getting his stats, his wins, and playing basketball his way. I don't care what ESPN says the narratives they push, LeBron in the Olympics isn't the MVP and is far from it. As always, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.